do you keep an eye on the financial markets or the financial news? Well, if you do, you might have no noticed that on the 20th of October, Diageo announced they were releasing $2 billion worth of bonds. Now this, bear with me, it relates to casks, it relates to cask investment, is important. Now, so basically what are the bonds? So essentially Diageo have released £2 billion worth of bonds. So they're essentially looking to crowdsource their business for the next couple of years. The interest rates are quite good. They're about five, five and a half percent, depending on how long you're looking to lock in for. And bonds like this appeal to fund managers, equity managers. They like, they, they appeal to pension funds and hedge funds and anybody who wants safe money, because essentially Diageo are guaranteeing that they're going to pay those rates of return. And this, the reason why this caught my attention and why I thought I'd talk to everyone out there about it is that it proves a really good point about cask investment and it's one of the lies about cask investment really and that's distilleries buy back their own casks now i have sold hundreds maybe yeah i've sold hundreds of casks i'm not sure of over a thousand yet it might be but anyway we sold hundreds of casks for people exiting their cask investments people who bought casks in the 70s 80s 90s 2000s 2010s We've helped people exit their cask investments. Now, when you're buying a cask, a lot of these companies will say, oh, well, one of the exit strategies is the distillery would want to buy back these casks. I have never, ever experienced this. I've experienced distilleries trying to buy back their casks and they will offer maybe one quarter of what the open market valuation is, but I've never found them to pay a good open market fair price for them. And the reason? Well, there's many reasons, but obviously the first one is that they're sat on warehouses full of the casks themselves. You know, they've got this whiskey at cost price. The cost that that liquid costs to produce, as in your barley, all the, all the distilling process, all the energy costs, the wood and the rent, you know, they're getting that at absolute cost price, stick it in the warehousing and they're paying a small amount, obviously, for the warehousing costs because the warehousing is going to have accumulated uh, you know, cost of running. Now, distilleries need huge volumes of liquid to, to make a release. You know, there's very few distilleries that do single cask bottlings anymore. You know, many of these single cask bottlings come out from independent bottlers. And, but, you know, let's take, for instance, oy, ah, this Dalmore Luminary 15 year old. That was 15,000 bottles in that release, you know, Distilleries need huge volumes in order to satisfy their huge demand. Now, you can kind of see the logic and why you might believe that a distillery might buy back their casks because, you know, whiskey takes time and money to, to produce. But then you can't use that stock for a good number of years. You know, most distilleries, their basic core range offering is a, is, is a 12 year old. So you're going to have to leave that those, that that revenue or that capital tied up for 12 years before you're able to start using it. Now, of course, big brands like Diageo, they have blended whiskies. So a large portion of these, these maturing stocks will go into blended whiskies for the likes of Johnny Walker and things, so they can get a bit of capital in the sort of sooner time. Now, the obvious sort of thing there is, is because your capital is tied up for so long, why not sell it to somebody, let them mature it, and then buy it back when it's reached an age that you can use it. Makes complete sense, doesn't it? Well, it does in one way, but it also makes no financial sense whatsoever. Because if you're a Diageo and you're at a multi-billion pound turnover, one of the biggest drinks companies, if not the biggest drinks company in the world, you've got bloody good credit. You know how good your sales are. You know how good your trading history has been for the last one, two, five, 10, 15 years. And you can project where that's going to go. And then if you need some money, let's talk about serious money. Let's talk about $2 billion worth of money. You can just go to the market and say, look, we want £2 billion worth of money. Here are some bonds. There's some really good interest rates. Come and give us money. Now, when they're all sold, which they will do, they might have sold already. They'll be then retraded because people like bonds. It's a bit of a funny market at the moment with interest rates, but people like bonds. Now, that gets Diageo £2 billion worth of capital without surrendering any stock. And basically just for saying, it's just a big loan. It's just a very fancy loan and on very good terms, two billion pounds at 5.4%. That's not bad at all, is it really? Now, the other point to note, if, if, the, if selling casks made more financial sense than selling bonds, 
then they'd bloody do that. <laughs> Sorry, but they just would. Any distillery would take their stock and if they needed some serious money, they would say, right, let's get 30,000 casks at 3,000 pounds. There's 90 million pounds worth of revenue. Now, if they were gonna do that, they would do that to the pension funds. They would do that to the fund managers. They would do that to the hedge funds and things that, that have the capital to buy those large volumes of, of, of stock. They wouldn't sell it one at a time, two at a time, a pallet, ooh, a pallet six casks. That's gonna make no difference to their inventory to sort of members of the public. So like, if they were trying to sell these casks to the public, you've then got those 30,000, you know, those 30,000 casks. So to, you know, let's say everybody buys two each, 15,000 individuals. So when you need to come and buy back that stock at a point in the future, at a meaningful time, you've got 15,000 people to approach to try and get the sales to get those 30,000 casks back. So if they were gonna do the cask side of things, they would do it to big financial institutions. They don't, they do big bonds. They do, they do bond sales like this. Now, some distilleries that are smaller than the likes of Diageo will have a maturation program that some of these big pensions, hedge funds and things can buy into. And again, it might be on a similar basis to this, but it would be on a very large volume of casks. So one of the exceptions to this is, let's say that you've got a parcel full of meaningful whiskey. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say that you've got a dozen casks, 25 casks, 50 casks of 25 or 30 year old stock. Something of enough volume that meant that the distillery itself could, could make a, a, like a release out of this, like a core range release. And something that's meaningful enough of an age statement wise to mean that they probably don't have that much in their inventories. Take Port Ellen, for example, the distillery is coming back online in the next couple of months, we, we, we anticipate they won't have any stock. So if you're sat on some very old casks of Port Ellen, because let's not forget it's not being produced for decades, then yes, Diageo would probably be really keen and interested in buying that stock back. But if you take that same whiskey and put it into a different marketplace, so you put it onto the open market, you put it with a broker like myself, who's got access to the markets in Asia and America, and even the Middle East nowadays, that whiskey will be worth a lot more to those private individuals than it will be to Diageo, for instance, because they've got to put their margins in, they've got to release a product at a fair price. These private individuals, like we saw with that notable sale of the 16 million pound cask of Ardbeg, so to a private individual because these are like yachts it's a good analogy a yacht you don't use a yacht because it's the cheapest and most convenient way to get around you use it because it's a yacht and it's flexing isn't it and casks so if you had a 30 40 year old cask of port ellen it's flexing you know you can flex and it's got more value to you in your flex and it will have to a big brand to release out there so the point of this video is so that you don't think that you're gonna buy six casks of whiskey and then in five, 10, 15 years time, the distillery are gonna be interested in buying it back. It's almost certain that they've made more profit by selling it to a broker who is then gonna sell it to you than it would make sense coming back and buying it back from you. It's not to say that you won't make a profit from your cask if you've bought it at a good price and you've got a delivery order and that cask is held in your name because there are lots of independent bottlers who go out there and like bottling this whiskey as single cask releases. Look at the whole world of independent bottlers. Most of them focus on single cask releases. They'll take a single barrel, single hogshead, single butt and release it. You look at the distilleries, most of, pretty much all of the distilleries release in decent volumes and it's simple. If you're the likes of Macallan or Ardbeg or any distillery for that instance, your, your fan base is too big. You know, like look at the Macallan exceptional cask series. They were single cask releases. Look at the Macallan Easter Elkies. They were single cask releases. They've stopped doing single cask releases. Macallan Red Collection, for instance, that isn't, that's from multiple casks. But interestingly, the Red Collection itself was a buyback. So the rumors in the industry say. And why was that a buyback? Because somebody, well, I won't mention it, had, has large reserves of Macallan and obviously Macallan need those reserves. So yeah, of course, if you've got 40, 50, 60, 72, 74 and 78 year old whiskey to sell back to Macallan, of course they're gonna be interested in it, but you're gonna to have to have enough volume to make it appeal to them. So anyway, it's a bit of a rambling video, but the essence is simple. Distilleries don't really buy back casks of whiskey. So if you hear a company saying that, mm, take a huge pinch of salt and then just walk away.